Srimad Bhagavatam, the forest of material enjoyment. Chapter 14, this is verse 31. The trapi niragalada swarena viharan ati kripana budir anuyo mukka iriksana dina ramya karmanaiva vismitam kalavadi. Translation. In this way, the the descendants of the monkeys intermingle with each other and they are generally known as sudras. Without hesitating, they live and move freely, not knowing the goal of life. They are captivated simply by seeing the faces of one another, which remind them of sense gratification. They are always engaged in material activity known as dhamya karma, and they work hard for material benefit. Thus they forget completely that one day their small lifespans will be finished and they will be degraded in the evolutionary cycle, purport. Materialistic people are sometimes called sudras or descendants of monkeys due to their monkey-like intelligence. They do not care to know how the evolutionary process is taking place nor are they eager to know what will happen after they finish their small human lifespan. This is the attitude of sudras. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission is Krishna conscious movement is trying to elevate sudras to the Brahman platform so that they will know the real goal of life. Unfortunately, being overly attached to sense gratification, materialists are not serious in helping this movement. Instead, they just some of them try to suppress it. Thus, it is the business of monkeys to disturb the activities of the Brahmanas. The descendants of monkeys completely forget that they will have to die, and they are very proud of scientific knowledge and the progress of material civilization. The word Gramya Karmana indicates activities meant only for the improvement of bodily comforts. Presently, all human society is engaged in improving economic conditions and godly comforts. People are not interested in knowing what is going to happen after death, nor do they believe in the transmigration of the soul. When one, is signed, when one scientifically studies the evolutionary theory, one can understand that human life is a junction where one, one, which, where one may take the path of promotion or degradation, or degradation as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Yanti Deva, Vritam Devam, Pratin Yanti Pratin Vrataham, Bhutani Yanti Bhute Jya, Yanti Mum Yaji No Pimum. Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. Those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors, and those who worship me will live with me. <clears throat> In this life, we have to prepare them ourselves for promotion to the next life. Those who are in the mode of Rajaguna are generally interested in being promoted to the heavenly planets. Some unknowingly are degraded into low, lower human forms, animal forms. Those in a mode of goodness can engage in devotional service, and after that, they can return home back to Godhead. Yanti mam yaji no pimam. That is the real purpose of human life. This Krishna conscious movement is trying to bring intelligent human beings to the platform of devotional service. Instead of wasting time trying to attain a better position in material life, one should simply endeavor to return home back to Godhead. Then all problems will be solved, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1 2 17. Srimadvata Svakata Krishna, Purnya Shravana Kirtanaham, Rinyanto Stoabhidani, Vidhunoti Surit Satam. Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma Sutrasola in everyone's heart and benefactor of the truth of the devotee, 
cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who rest, relishes his messages, which are in themselves virtuous and properly heard and chanted. <clears throat> One, has to, one simply has to follow the regulative principles, act like a Brahmana, chant the Hare Krishna mantra, and read Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. In this way, one purifies himself of the baser, baser material modes, Tamagun and Rajagun, and becomes free from the greed of these three modes. One who does, does become free from the greed of these modes can attain complete peace in mind. In this way, one can understand the Supreme Personality of God in one's relationship with Him, and thus be promoted to the highest perfection, Siddhim Paramangataha, Umagyan Timirandasya, Jana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Melitam Yena, Tasmai Sri Guru Vinamaha, Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti. Divaranta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorvani Pachari Nene Vishesha Sunyavari Paschakti Adesa Tarine Manchakau Patru Bischa Kripa Sindhu Pedacha Ditaram Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitana Untananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I will return within 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, this verse is a continuation from the previous verse of the monkey-like human beings. As it's mentioned here in the purport, human life is a junction where one can go up towards higher realms of material and ultimately spiritual existence, or one can go down again into the animal and lower species of life. So the foolish materialists, they are so much busy simply trying to engage in expanding their small little empires. That means the money they have, the family prestige that they are seeking, and the uh, various types of material things that are so prominently available now on today's market, working so hard simply to have more and more things to play with. <laughs> uh, so a good example here, or a good analogy, a good comparison is monkeys. Monkeys are not aware of the goal of life, they don't understand that they're going to die. And those who are descendants of monkeys also have that same mentality. What is that mentality? Enjoy sense gratification. Of course, monkeys are very proficient at sex life, so that's one of their main activities. In fact, as Srila Prabhupada said, the materialistic People work hard just to enjoy sense, sex, sense, sense gratification in the form of sex life. And that is their so-called happiness. Maitunya uh, Agra. It's this, uh, uh, in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it says that the materialists, they work hard to make money 
maintain their family members all day and at night they disengage in sleeping and sex life and they consider that mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. well you can see if you can compare it it's no better than animal life and sometimes even the animals look much better because they're acting according to their nature where the human beings are acting like animals and they look like they're like a fool because they don't know what is the purpose of life nor are they interested in finding out what is the purpose of life so much absorbed in whatever material activities they're performing and when they receive some results according to their desires they think they have achieved success in life but all of this is ephemeral has nothing to do with the soul it has everything to do with the body but even from the bodily conception of life most of the activities engaged in the in the human civilization especially in today's modern human civilization we use the word modern in a very loose way people are uh, overly attached to material activities not even in a, what we call a sophisticated and what we say natural way they simply absorb themselves in more and more forms of sense gratification eating in different ways sleeping in different uh, situations making different arrangements to defend themselves and enjoy trying to enjoy sex in different ways so this is with different living entities so these are the bodily necessities of the animals and they have some place within the human realm too but they are not they're not forms of enjoyment they're forms of maintenance that's all and so being absorbed here it's interesting Prabhupada said they look into the faces of their monkey-like uh, partners and what do they do they forget the goal of life and all they can think about is more sense gratification uh, so this goes on today as human civilization and if someone is successful in achieving something they're advertised as a great personality in vedic culture a great personality is one who knows the scriptures who teaches others knowledge of the scriptures and the importance of the human form of life these are considered to be glorious qualities in a human civilization it's also known to by which one can live in a very natural way and not work hard to simply maintain body and soul but here we see in today's western civilization the uh the the extent that they work just for some bodily comforts or so even bodily necessities is much harder than the animals <laughs> because they think working hard is the goal of life but keeping oneself absorbed in materialistic activities not knowing that time is catching up with them as it says in the bhagavatam time is like a herdsman that, that moves his sheep from one pasture to another so time is moving the living entities from one material situation to another as they get different bodies according to their activities in their previous lives so um, time is that ever uh, equalizer it brings everything to a halt and it brings one to the results of their activities in the form of their next body and according to this particular verse here if one lives in this way they will fall down into the animal species of life in the animal species of life there is ignorance and there is no awareness nor there is any ability to elevate them oneself to higher consciousness so um, we have to understand what is the purpose of human form of life 
It's not to enjoy sense gratification. Dato Brahma Jigyasa. To inquire who I am. What is the goal of life? How can I become happy? Who is God? What is my relationship with him? And how to act in that relationship? These are the, the questions of a person who is vidvan. Vidvan means one who is actually intelligent, who knows the benefit of life, or who is, in, who is inquisitive into the benefit of life. This person is intelligent. But nowadays, all we see is people are trying to keep away the material miseries by making so many material arrangements. The material miseries cannot be kept away by one's material arrangements because material miseries work under the direction of higher powers. The material energy is the, uh, is the child of the Supreme Personality of God. And sometimes we say the wife and she works accordingly, according to the rules and, and uh, functions given to her by the Supreme Lord himself. She is very powerful. And one of the qualities of uh, the material energy is to, forget, to help the living entity forget who they are and what is the goal of life. And so we find the world very much on the path of uh, material success, despite the fact that they're not getting much success, they still continue in that same direction. And so this is a, uh, a condemned civilization. Uh, uh, there was a one, there was a book that was published many years ago called Animal Farm animal farm and it was just the hierarchy of the different animals on a farm and one animal controlling another animal and trying to get more sense gratification from the, the farm than this other animal. So it was a hard competition and it was a society simply based on animal propensities and that's what we have today. And here it says that they are not eager, nor they're interested in learning about the goal of life. And sometimes when they meet spiritual people, they try to create some uh, blockage in their spiritual uh, activities. Uh, they don't see the benefit, nor do they think that other people are actually uh, doing anything beneficial. It's like they say that if you don't have a particular occupation, you're a burden on society, and therefore you are a useless eater. In other words, you're simply consuming without producing. And uh, therefore, you are just persona, persona non grata. <laughs> you're not really fulfilling the, the need of the economic adventure of the Western civilization by contributing your energy, time, and, and effort in order to produce more and more things for sense gratification. So this is material life. Therefore, one who takes the spiritual life can understand the difference between what is valuable and what has no value at all. And that a person becomes a little knowledgeable when they connect with Krishna in devotional service. Krishna inspires that person to understand that, yes, this material world has a purpose. It's meant to elevate you to a position where you can free yourself from the entanglement of the hard struggle of material existence and simply return back home, back to the spiritual world, where in, which is your, what we say, your um, what is it? That? It's your inheritance, your spiritual inheritance. You have a, you have a great inheritance that is waiting for you. It's a great treasure. No one will touch it because it belongs to you. But it's, but if you don't get it, it will stay there, 
until you actually get it. And if you never get it, it'll still remain, but you will never be able to take advantage of it. And so that great inheritance is Tattva uh, Deham Purna Janmani, 19 Mami, to go back home where life is eternal, full of knowledge and unending happiness, unlimited and unending happiness. But when we speak about that, people think, oh, that is just some eulogy, some way to get people interested in spiritual activities. They have no understanding, nor do they believe the scriptures. They think the scriptures are made by people who are like them, who are full of so many other faults, and therefore they, they consider it to be eulogies or mythologies. They have no understanding because of their monkey-like intelligence. A monkey is not very intelligent because, well, he's intelligent in a material way, but he, he can't think beyond sense gratification like that. One of the ways they used to use to catch monkeys, this was a program that they still do in India to nowadays, they cut a hole into a, in a tree and put a little nut or fruit inside the hole where the monkey, when he sees the fruit in there or the nut, he puts his hand in there and then he grabs it. But because he grabs it, once he makes a fist, his hand becomes bigger than the hole and he can't get it out. And he's trying to get it out, but he can't. And then the, the hunter comes in along and captures the monkey. But if the monkey was had some intelligence, all he does has to do is let go of the fruit, and then he can get free. So in the same way, these monkey-like uh, sutras that go on today as reputable people within society are so attached to material sense gratification, they can't see the hunter of death coming along to end all of their uh, exploits, trying to uh, enjoy the material energy, which is not enjoyable. So um, this particular chapter in a very analogous way gives us a clear understanding of the futility of material life. Uh, the word forest of material enjoyment is very significant. Because when you're in a forest, you get lost. You're, you're lost, you're going from one place to another, not knowing where is the end of the forest or where the forest is leading you. So in the same way, when we enter into the forest of material enjoyment, or material world, we are going this way and that way, trying different types of activities provided by the forest-like environment. But all we're doing is getting more and more uh, harassed by the difficulties of living in the forest. But somehow if we meet a holy man in the forest, they are there not to simply enjoy the forest. And they're not wandering like we are. They are meant there. They come in order to find souls who are lost in the forest and take them out of the forest into the uh, existence of unlimited uh, happiness. So if you meet one person like that, then you can give up your monkey-like adventures to enjoy in this material world and take to the life of the human beings. Human beings are not men simply to enjoy sense gratification. Human beings are men for self-realization. That is the goal of human life. There is no second goal. So this is a very interesting chapter. And you'll see as you continue with the verses, the analogies go in different directions, just to help us understand that we are lost in this material world. And there's no way that we can find our way out by ourselves. We have to take shelter of the monkey trainer, who is the bona fide spiritual master, who comes to catch a few monkeys and uh, give them some, some really nice bananas that are tasty 
and uh, maybe even dipped in a little bit of honey before so they can somehow rather see that there's something better than simply wandering in the forest and trying to look for dry bananas on these uh, dead trees. So this is somewhat a, a uh, an opposite the great forest of material enjoyment. There's no material enjoyment. There's simply a forest to tempt you into thinking you can enjoy here. Enjoyment is always attached with suffering. And if you compare the happiness in the material world with the suffering in the material world, you'll easily understand and be easily to evaluate that there are so many ways to suffer and there's very few ways to enjoy in this material world because it is, as Krishna says, a place for suffering. It is a place where you can only struggle hard and then die. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, life is quite pathetic. When you're young, you're always making so many plans to enjoy in so many different ways and to achieve in so many different ways. And when you get old and you can't do anything anymore, you look back in the past and you reflect in a very sentimental way. Oh, how nice it was when we were young. We used to enjoy in this way and that way, inflating the so-called experiences in our life just to somehow or other make us feel that we have somehow been successful in our attempts to enjoy. We take out the scrapbook with all the pictures of the family members and friends that we know. And you say, oh, do you remember him when we were there at that one wedding and he ate too much and got sick and, and vomited all over the floor? You do, do you remember that one? Oh, yes, yes, that was so horrible, yeah. But we have some nice memories too here. Hmm. Here is Buck the Bert. He has married six times and still he's trying for the seventh. So, you know, this is the material world. <laughs> there was one rich guy, he was, he, he was kind of old. He was like in his seventies and he would marry these young girls who were in their twenties. And they, they would marry him simply for his money. And then he would enjoy with them the best he could. He was like 70 years old. And then after some time, he would give them a couple million dollars and then he would go to the next one. <laughs> so this is their monkey life. So um, this verse is not simply some uh, hyperbole or you know, exaggeration. It is actually a factual understanding of how people in the material world actually position themselves in order to enjoy more and more not knowing that their frail material bodies can fall down at any moment, and that's the end of their so-called plans for enjoyment. Uh, so one should be intelligent, Vidvan, one should have a good intelligence and understand that yes, I want to enjoy, but where is real enjoyment? Where is that enjoyment that doesn't end? Where is that enjoyment that becomes greater as time goes on? That is my nature. That is my life. That is my uh, uh, my uh, inheritance. How to find that? And then, well, again, wandering in the forest of material enjoyment, that great sage appears from one behind one tree, with a smile on his face and a a pair of japa beads and a book and, and, and motions to you, please come this way. I have something to give you, which you'll be eternally benefited from. So when we do that and take it seriously, and then we are on the way back to our existence in the spiritual world. And even in this world, before we leave this world, it's a life of happiness and satisfaction centered around devotional activities. 
Okay, so we'll stop there. Thank you, Maharaj. Another wonderful class, another very awakening class, Maharaj. And thank you for constantly reminding us the real purpose of being human, not to be like monkeys. I mean, we hear it again and again, <laughs> but we are constantly like imitating them, understanding yet not applying. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your... And thanks for all the examples. Thanks for the stories. It's so nice to hear from you. Thank you so much for your association. <laughs> I hope everybody else agrees with you. <laughs> I, I think so. It's, it's, it's wonderful, Maharaj. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions, we can ask Maharaj now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavad Pranam Maharaj. All glories to Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj, for the nice class. So Maharaj, just two, three questions, Maharaj. This, this, um, this uh, earthly planet is called Mrityu Loka. Right, Maharaj? Like, uh, the material world is called Mitya, uh, Mitya, uh, Mitya Loka. Yeah, this, 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 just, the, just the earthly planet or all the planetary systems, Maharaj? Because I get confused about that. Well, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, from the highest planet to the material world and to the lowest, all the places of birth and death were, you know, all places of, of misery where in birth and death take place. So anywhere in the, in the material universe is one has to die. So Krishna is speaking this verse in order to, to let us understand, even if you elevate yourself to a higher material position, that is also temporary. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. so Maharaj, uh, like you were mentioning, uh, the human form of life, we have the choice, right? What about uh, that? Does that extend same to the heavenly planets and the the lower planets also, where human beings reside, or just on the earthly planet? The earthly planet, because of its balance, somewhat of a balance between happiness and distress, and the humans have an advantage. They can see both. But on the heavenly planets, there's too much happiness. And therefore, they become bewildered by that. And they don't see the importance of self-realization. They get too absorbed in sense gratification and material enjoyment. On the lower planets, because suffering is so strong, people are always trying to relieve their suffering so in a material way so they don't really take so much to, to spiritual life. Although it is more, more uh, likely that people in the lower planets will uh, become more serious about spiritual life, unless they're overcome with demoniac mentalities, and then, then they, they can't see outside of that. But generally, too much happiness in the higher planets, too much suffering in the lower planets, makes it hard for one to take the self-realization. The Earth planet is a nice balance. Of course, the balance is being shifted now towards more suffering. And so people are trying to uh, re again, trying to rebuild their happiness as they know it in the, from the past. But if they would understand that that happiness is no longer available, now, if they want real happiness, they have to take to, to understanding higher principles in spiritual life. So we have an advantage being on this planet. There's not too much happiness, not too much distress. Okay. So that's a ba okay, balance here so that we can connect to self-realization. So Maharaj, I was reading, I forgot uh, in which canto, that uh, the, the, the lower planetary system also, they have, you know, appellant material enjoyment, uh, like Billas, it's called Billas Varga, right? So, like, what's the difference, Maharaj, than higher planets and lower planetary systems? What's the difference? The amount of suffering and enjoyment, that's all. Mm -hmm. mm, like, okay, okay. Because the yeah. yeah the where I read right Maharaj it's saying the lower planets also they have very opulent gardens and all that you know details were given how they enjoy and you know they have unlimited light 
through these uh, jewels and all that well they have no sunlight uh -huh. the sun doesn't reach there therefore the, all their light is artificial that's called the subterranean heavenly planets uh, and they're below the earth and uh, if you read the fifth canto there's a very uh, elaborate and detailed description of some of the activities on these lower planets, which are not very, well, we say pleasing. But, you know, although they have of this opulence, they can't enjoy it as much as it, those in the higher planets do enjoy. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Yeah, and mostly the sun doesn't reach there. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Suresh. Thanks for the wonderful answer, Maharaj. Anybody else that would like to pose any questions? You can raise your hands if you want, or you can unmute yourself and ask Maharaj directly. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. It's all good to you. Um, thank yeah, you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the beautiful class and very nice examples. Like, you know, <laughs> the, the people, they see each other's faces like monkey-like faces and they forget the real goal of life. That's very true. It's, yeah, they're ju jumping from tree to tree. <laughs> yes. And looking for happiness here and there. The bananas are dry. <laughs> Yeah, we are very fortunate uh, uh, having the shelter of Srila Prabhupada and following his footsteps and uh, following the direction of. Yeah, otherwise, we have to come back life after life and try to try to again try to enjoy in this material world. And it's risky business because you don't know. Even if you get some good material position, that that's also temporary, and it fall, and then in due course of time, one can fall way down. You know, we have the example of King Nirga, who was a very pious and very charitable king, but he performed some some wrong activities and was forced to take birth as a lizard. So, um, in the process of uh, performing pious and religious activities, one can also make mistakes and perform irreligious activities and gradually go down. So, it's a very, what the, what's the word, precarious existence in this material world. Nothing is guaranteed yeah. to get better. Mm -hmm. So, why gamble? Some people think, well... You know, let me let me stay here a couple more lives and enjoy as much as I can, and after that I'll get serious. But that's not guaranteed. I may have a nice material situation, but I still have a body that can get old, can die, and can die and get sick at any time. Yeah. So no, no one in this material world is in a good position unless they take up devotional service. Then they're protected by Krishna. And then they're elevated by devotional activities. Yes. So one should see. Yes. You know, one can learn from the materialists what not to do. And learn from the spiritualists what we should be doing. Yes. <laughs> hmm. 
Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Shama Gauri. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Oh, Sukhavaha, is that? Sukhavaha? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please Hare accept Maharaj. my humble obeisances. Oh, glories to you. Oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Maharaj, can you hear me, yeah? Yeah, very good. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for a very nice class and explaining in the, in the example of monkeys. I know you all are monkeys, how much ever we are told we don't understand. But, uh, you know, at least you are there to help us. That's the main thing that uh, we are lucky enough that at least you are there when we, whenever we need guidance. So thank you for that. Uh, Maharaj, can you please just elaborate more on the material miseries you said that it comes from uh, above like you mentioned in your class material it's, miseries well they're unlimited there's different ways that one can suffer from it there's three categories of suffering and in those three categories there's unlimited ways that one can experience suffering for example there is a uh, the first one is called Aryatmika, is the, the, the miseries that come by way of having a material body and mind. Mind gives us trouble. Mind is never happy. It's always an anxiety form of suffering. The body at any time, something can go wrong. And then we have to pay big doctor bills. Uh, then we have miseries of other living entities. And that's even more prominent. We get miseries from other people. We get miseries from animals, from mosquitoes, from government tax collectors. <laughs> we get miseries from, you know, from so many other, for, other living entities are giving us miseries. And then we have miseries by higher powers, just like we have an epidemic that's coming from higher powers. And then we have uh, severe cold, severe heat, tornadoes, earthquakes, forest fires, droughts, uh, so many forms of natural calamities that, can, that befall the human civilization continuously. And so these are the three categories. Now within those three categories, so many ways you can suffer. Why? Because Krishna has arranged this material energy so we don't, we don't try to get comfortable and happy here. These sufferings are meant to give us some understanding that this is not the place for happiness. There must be a place for happiness because I want to be happy. My goal is to be happy. I'm always looking for happiness. So if I'm always looking for happiness, where do I find it? If I'm trying to find it in a place where everything is going wrong and I'm suffering, then there must, there must be another place where there is real happiness and it's not like that. So that's an intelligent and, you know, conclusion. And then one will, one will understand, yes, okay, it's on the spiritual platform. So let me investigate and find it there. And it's available. <laughs> it's easily available. And the more we become proficient at the execution of devotion and service, the more we experience happiness. Satisfaction, peace so of mind. We're not materialist persons are very enthusiastic when they're in, they gain something and very unhappy when they lose something, the body can lose something and gain something and not be affected by that because they have something that is above loss and gain and that is their relationship with Krishna. That's never lost. Mm. But while we are in this material world, Guru Maharaj, we will be a little bit affected by all these things, wouldn't we? Yeah, well, we have independence and we misuse that independence. 
And we choose mm -hmm. to, rather than serve Krishna, to compete with Krishna for a position of enjoyment. So we get a chance to facilitate that desire by, and Krishna creates the material world so we can act out this false idea of we are the enjoyer. And what do we do? We just come in competition with others who are trying to do the same thing. And sometimes we make friends with other monkeys and then we try to enjoy the whole bunch of bananas together. But after the bananas are all done, then the monkeys just start fighting amongst each other. <laughs> so even if you get some even if you get some success, the bananas run out, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> True. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Take shelter of Krishna's holy name and association and service to the devotees, and you'll under will understand more the value of what Srila Prabhupada has given you. That is true, Guru Maharaj. Trying that. <clears throat> do feel some change in the thinking at least. Thank you, Krishna. Yeah. Yeah, true. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Rio. Any last minute questions for Maharaj? Um, you got one from Raj? Yes, Raj Prabhu, go ahead. Hey Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. It's all glorious to Srila Prabhupada. All glorious to yourself, Maharaj. I do well, I do well. Uh, I, I really liked a verse that you read uh, early, earlier. It, it was around... Uh, when we're relishing these messages... Krishna wipes away our some of our lustful material desires, sense gratification. Mm. And then I was thinking we need to find more creative ways of making the masses that have no interest in any of this to uh, relish messages. It's uh, we've been floating around in this world just uh, like monkeys for so many lives, and now we've just got a little bit. We've started to take some baby steps on the right path, and it really feels like uh, we want to share that with everyone else, but they're not interested but we have to find creative ways of making them interested. Yeah, there is. When you taste a little bit of the sweetness, the natural, the natural tendency of the human psyche is to want to share it and let other experience that same happiness. But they don't understand the bad, the, benefit. So we, we kind of like try to cover it over in a very simple way. So our whole process is singing, dancing, and eating. So we make it into a joyful experience. Just come and sing these names. When you feel happy, you can also dance. And uh, here's some nice food you like to eat. Try this. It's quite unique. It's different. It's healthy. Tasty. So we present this higher knowledge in a package of some somehow 
and a pa package of enjoyment. And it's not a package, it's actually a real definition of the, what's in the ingredients is that it's very enjoyable. Sing, dance, and eat. Then hear about and discuss the philosophy of the spiritual world, the activities of Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. I think we need to bring the world to one of your kirtan groups. Yeah, we need to do more kirtan. Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, please feel free to unmute yourself. Go ahead and ask questions now that we have the wonderful association of Maharaj. So do not hesitate. Go ahead and ask any question that you might have. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dadot Pranam. Thank you so much for uh, another wonderful class, Maharaj. Uh, when you say it, I don't know if you're, you know, I mean, of course, it's all very true, um, but uh, it's very, very bitter too to understand that we have been suffering for so many uh, lifetimes and we still don't want to come out of it. And so this, we, we talk about the monkey mind, but oh, here it's talking about us also as being uh, monkeys. Uh, so it is, it is a very, very uh, hard section, but definitely very true and very relevant to us. It's an eye opener for us. If we don't read this and uh, change our consciousness, then I don't know what will happen. So thank you very much for speaking so directly and very clearly on this topic, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Jai Ho, Hare Krishna. Krishna. The process is nice. Chant, dance, take prasadam, and read books on Krishna and the goal of life. It's a very joyful process. It's, it's not coming out of it simply means emphasizing what we've been given, that's all. Yes, my right. Mm. It's not painful. The painfulness is the uh, giving up of their, our material attachments. But we replace material attachments with higher spiritual enjoyment. If Krishna consciousness wasn't enjoyable, who would want it? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we are trapped here. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's only through Krishna consciousness. And like what you were saying, it is through the spiritual master. He's a monkey trainer. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Yeah, sometimes the monkeys don't want to be trained, but he keeps trying. <laughs> he has many tricks to... Uh, to attract the monkeys and somehow or other get them to, you know, eat the good bananas. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for being here on the forum every two weeks. And Maharaj, you spend so much time with us and try to help us out. We are very, very grateful, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna and do like a Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I just uh, want to thank you because today is the Thanksgiving day. So we are very, very grateful to you and thanking you for all your association. This pandemic means because of your association, we didn't feel that it's a pandemic. It's like, you know, blessings that uh, you are coming on the call and giving your association. It's really really wonderful Maharaj and even though you 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 are your health and everything you don't care you just care about us like giving classes and 
and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Well, Prabhupada has given us so much and we want to share it with as many people who, who are eager to hear. Mm -hmm. See, the Prabhupada spent every moment trying to find ways to spread Krishna consciousness, to use every bit of his time to glorify Krishna, to teach us what is, what is real life, to reprimand us when we were off. Prabhupada was 24 hours, and this is a literal statement, absorbed in giving Krishna consciousness to everyone. He didn't, he didn't rest. He simply was 24 hours a day he was given Krishna consciousness. So if we take a little bit of that and we can uh, appreciate it and then learn how to use it, then we will please Srila Prabhupada and then we will please Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Rajiv Prabhu had a question. I think his hand was raised before. Yes, Mataji. Can we go ahead? Yes. Yeah, yes. You can unmute and ask. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Wonderful class. Dunbar Pranam to you. Uh, one of my questions is from the ignorance. Uh, mm -hmm. If we if we look at from a nature, uh, if you look at a nature, uh, I mean, nature has given everything very beautiful, the, the way it is designed. And a few examples, if we see that bringing of a child, I mean, by the mother, the attachment is too much, you know, and she takes care of whether this is a human form or animal form, you know, you see that, that how mother bring a child and this is the way it is designed. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a, the human body, if we have to sleep, we have to sleep. We can't stop that. In the morning, if we have to go to, uh, I mean, uh, morning fashion, we have to go there. We can't stop that, you know. So the nature is driving it, you know. It, very beautiful design things. But when we look at this, uh, uh, what do you call it as a, uh, a material word, Maya, it is, it is designed in such a way that the people get gross into this, uh, keep enjoying it. And the transformation, which is uh, from a material world to the spiritual world, is, is a difficult world, difficult one, you know. The mind is, is a restless thing. Uh, so now that I come to a question, what could be a reason designing the mind so restlessness and making a transformation journey from the material world to the spiritual world becomes difficult. Whereas everything what he's designed is perfect. We can't find any any mistake in that or any mm -hmm. lacuna in that. We have our independence. And that means all of all of nature falls into the, the natural pattern given by God for life. But the human being has its independence where he can comply with the orders and the, and the rhythms of nature or he can go against it. Going against it means we create a different type of mo uh, mentality, which is opposite of God's natural plan. And because we do that, the mind becomes restless in order to fulfill these desires. So this restless mind is, been, is something that has been with us, not just in this particular life, but for previous lives also. So what is that restlessness trying to fulfill desires 
based on the mind, the senses, and the intelligence. Fulfillment of these desires causes the living entity to think and act in a certain way in order to try to accomplish that, which may not be, uh, there is authorized forms of what we say, sense satisfaction, which are given by the Vedas, which allows for people to fulfill their material needs, such as family life, sleeping, eating, activities, but it's done within a certain context following a certain principle. And the principle basically is that they are, they are done in a very simple and natural way, but the bulk of time and energy should be used for, uh, to try to understand God. So because the mind is so restless and it doesn't follow any particular pattern, even if it it learns of the pattern, it creates its own pattern outside of that because that's its nature. And therefore we are dragged around by the mind from mm -hmm. one place to another. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very clearly uh, explained in Srimad Bhagavatam in many places, especially in the fifth canto, sixth chapter. If you read the fifth canto, sixth chapter, verses three, four, five, and six. Right, probably. Yeah, you get a little clear understanding of the nature of the, the mind. So we're working with something that is contrary to our best interest, and that is the restless mind. So you have to control the mind by the intelligence, and you have to That's connect nice. the you have to connect the intelligence uh -huh. with higher knowledge so that higher knowledge comes from guru and from krishna or from shastra we say krishna from shastra so once we learn the, yes, under, the proper understanding and apply it we can gradually bring the mind back as a friend right now it's acting more like an enemy Get it. yeah so the intelligence is the force and the direction is Guru and Shastra and Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for us. Yeah, that's, that's verse number three from, from the uh, fifth canto, sixth chapter. The nine, the nine, mind. Therefore, Prabhupada talks about this and he says, um, one should not uh, trust the mind, always mistrust, like that. So these are the, yeah, the mind is by nature very restless. And one, you can read the verses all the way down to uh, verses three, four, five, and I believe verse number six, too. Mm, yes, Maharaj, we... We have a four holidays and our target is to focus more on Bhagavatam. Normally weekdays, we don't get time. So this is a time actually I've got and I've blocked, already booked for going through the, I mean, rereading the Bhagavatam again. Yes. So I'll focus on this. Can yeah. Do, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thanks a lot. Also, also the 11th chapter of the fifth canto also is also very, very extensively describing the nature of the mind. The 11th, canto, uh, the 11th chapter here, towards the end of the chapter, you'll see also. And it carries into the 12th chapter also somewhat. So Mother, you said chapter, chapter 3, 11 so, and 12. Mm, yeah, it goes, it, it carries into 12 a little bit, but mostly it's chapter Eleven. Yes, Maharaj. Sure. Thank you, Maharaj. Verse number yeah. 17, the uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy of the living entity. If one neglects it or gives it a chance, it will grow more power and become victorious. Although it is not factual, what that does that mean? That it's simply a covering over our real mind. Still, it's very strong. It covers the constitutional position of the soul. And therefore, this is King, uh, this is uh, Jad Bharat speaking to King Rahugana. 
He says, please try to conquer this mind by the weapon of service to the lotus feet of the spiritual master mm -hmm. and of the supreme personality of God. Do this with great care and great attention. It's not something that is so easily done. Mm -hmm. It requires uh, it requires attention. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you opened up a subject that is quite extensive, the nature of the mind. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Maharaj, what happened, I was just thinking when the, everything God has designed so beautifully, you focus any area, any, I mean, you look at the tree, the way they, they change their color and all. I mean, any aspect of what is designed from a nature perspective is so beautifully and why this transformation journey becomes so difficult, very difficult. You know, a person has to take birth and birth for that. So that was really difficult to understand that, okay, why this journey is so difficult. We have to realign ourselves with the will of God, then it becomes less difficult and then finally it becomes easy. Because we're outside of God's will or his recommendations for us on how to live life in this world, there is a recommended way to live. <laughs> You'll see nature follows its natural pattern. Only the humans, because of uh, independence, decide to do something different. But all nature works nicely under God's arrangement. God's arrangement. <laughs> what a, when he is designed, I mean, the material things become so forcefully that it, I mean, people keep on going behind that. And just because of the mind itself. I mean, yeah. the many examples we have seen, many Rishi Muni, even yesterday in the Katha, I mean, Bhagavatam class, the example was there. I mean, Rishi Muni was doing a tapasya in, in, in the deep water and, and if, if he fall down, I mean, just, just because of, of one, one senses become so attractive and he just fell down. I mean... That, that was Subhara Muni, yeah. Yeah, so... From that perspective, it, the transformation journey becomes so difficult. Yeah, that's why sadhusanga is important. Association with devotees, especially those devotees who are senior. That, that, that is the foundation for becoming safe from the effects of the material energy. We have to seek out and uh, learn from senior association associate serve serve and hear hear what we're hearing we're hearing about that knowledge that will uh, correct our wayward mind and bring it back to devotion to krishna yes maharaj it's a process yes maharaj yes it's, i think to help you understand what you, basically we have to realize we've been in this material world for so many lives and these tendencies these material tendencies do not go away simply by uh, a little effort it takes some cultivation it takes time it takes enthusiasm determination patience association and hearing and chanting the glories of the lord all that is required, the process and the means to execute the process must align themselves with the will of the Lord. Yes, Maharaj, too. Thank you so much, Maharaj, yes. But it's, it's fun. It's not, it's not meant to be miserable. <laughs> It is fun. Yes, Maharaj. I, I, I can um, agree with you. I mean, uh, many, 
uh, I mean, from the Gopal Gopal Maharaj says that um, doing a chanting is a is a having a sweet candy, and uh, I agree with that. When we get into deep dive into chanting, it, it become a sweet candy. We don't want to come out of that chanting route. I mean. No. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it, it's it's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it, the sweetness is always there, and it's doesn't doesn't run out. <laughs> true, very true, Vala. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank thank you, Vala. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Vala. Radha Vinodini Mataji. If you want, you may go ahead, please, with your question. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, you spoke about uh, that uh, Krishna consciousness is, is an enjoyable process. And, and I was wondering that uh, I... I just sometimes have this feeling that I approach this process in a in a material way. I mean, sometimes it's uh, enjoyable as music, the kirtans or or prasadam is like um, like a tasty food. And and uh, I was wondering if uh, the the um, if my consciousness is uh, not the best, uh, is the effect the same, or or it's important. How I yeah, if, if we approach all of these activities with a desire to learn and a desire to serve, then we are in the right consciousness. And then the enjoyment comes by way of the activity, not by way of our planning. And just if we have that mood of service. So when you're in kirtan, how do you serve? You hear. And kirtan, how do you serve? You chant. In kirtan, how do you serve? You dance. These are all ways to serve. <laughs> when you're taking prasadam, you think, oh, this is Krishna come in the form of these nice foodstuffs. Krishna is so kind and merciful. It's, it's uh, so nice. I, I was just wondering that uh, if I could really see all the time these things uh, through the eyes of the scriptures, it would be so nice. And... Uh, how, how is it possible to develop that? So if uh, I just read, that is enough, or shall I do some kind of effort uh, on top of that? Effort has to be there to, to somehow or other cut away from our old habits and our old ways of thinking in the wrong way. So you have to make an effort. It doesn't, generally, when we use that word, generally it doesn't happen Right away, you have to work at it. Devotional service is called cultivation of the activities of devotional service in the right mood. The mood is to serve, the mood is to learn. If you keep those two moods, you're trying to learn, you're trying to serve, then you'll always be in the best position to get the benefit of the activities. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I, I, I will try to. It's just sometimes yeah, yeah. remembering is so so difficult to. Well, not only remember, but you have to know when in whatever situation you're in, how do I serve in this situation? We may not always be so clear because we just go through the routine sometimes and we don't think in terms of service. Mm -hmm. And how can we remind ourselves when it just well, doesn't come to yeah. mind? That, that's our nature. Our nature is to serve. We can't, that is, we're always serving at every minute. It's the question of where do we direct our service attitude towards. Mm -hmm. Where the enjoying spirit means we're trying to serve our body and mind, that's all. Mm -hmm. The service spirit, it means we're trying to, uh, try to cultivate the nature of the soul. Don't try for enjoyment. Forget that. Try to serve. Try to learn. Enjoyment will come by way of Krishna's mercy, not by our 
planning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, yeah, uh, I, I just have this feeling that I really have to let go many, many old habits. But uh, one, at, one yeah. at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Work on one, you finish one, and then face the next one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, very good advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. There you go. Okay, to our hosts, we offer our obeisances, and we thank you for uh, facilitating this discussion. And I think we should uh, move on to the next point.